Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to go back in time a little bit and I'm going to share with you our favorites from 2022. Now I stuck with things that were new to us this year, things that we tried and fell in love with and they became our favorites. I've got a couple breakfasts, a lunch and a few dinners to share with you so I hope you enjoy. I'm gonna make copycat Subway breakfast sandwiches. Now, Gary and I, we love Subway's breakfast sandwiches, but the only one near us that sells them is inside of a Walmart, which isn't really convenient, so we don't have them nearly as often as what we would like to, because we really enjoy them. But I thought, you know, there has got to be a way that I can make these at home. And so I, we love like the Southwest Chipotle dressing, not the new one, they've changed it, the old one. Uh, and I was like, there has got to be, you know, a copycat recipe and I found one and it is like spot on. So let me show you how to make these. Um, if you don't care for the Southwest Chipotle sauce, you can just skip this part of the recipe. But if you like it, I recommend you all give this a try. All right, here are the ingredients you're going to need for the Southwest Chipotle sauce. First up is some ranch dressing. You can use your favorite bottled. I like to use my homemade or really it's semi-homemade. And a lot of people ask me for this recipe. It's not really my recipe or really even a recipe and it's more semi-homemade. I just use the Hidden Valley Ranch dressing mix and I follow the instructions on the back of the packet. So for one packet or about three tablespoons of dry mix, it's a cup of milk. Um, you could use buttermilk. You could use regular milk. I've even made it with almond milk and then a cup of mayonnaise. You whisk that together, put it in the fridge for at least 30 minutes to give it a chance to thicken up and the, um, like all the dried herbs will soften and then that's it. So we've got some of the ranch and then you need some mayonnaise, white vinegar, onion powder, garlic powder, sugar, and then chipotle peppers and adobo. You can, of course, use the cans. I like using this jarred, though, um, because I don't use a whole can at once, and so you can just um, put this in your fridge, and they're already chopped up for you. To make the sauce really easy, we're going to add everything to a blender. Uh, for stuff like this, I have this little Hamilton Beach blender. I got this years and years ago at Walmart. I'll try to find something similar uh, and link it down below on Amazon. It's great for stuff like this or for like individual smoothies. So again, just adding everything. We're going to add the ranch, the mayonnaise, the vinegar, onion powder, garlic powder, sugar, and then the chipotle peppers. Now this sauce does have a kick to it. Um, if you're kind of more sensitive to spice, you can cut back like half the amount of chipotle peppers. I'm just going to whiz that up and then I kind of scrape down the sides and then whiz it for just a couple more seconds and that's it. Super, super easy. You are going to chill this in the fridge and the recipe said this will keep up to two weeks. So that's kind of cool. You can make it once and use it on all kinds of things. Now I am going to put it in this little squeeze bottle. I just got this at Walmart. I think it was like 95 cents, 98 cents, something like that. All right, so for the sandwiches themselves. Now, I've mentioned before on my channel that my husband, when it comes to sandwiches and burgers, he pretty much likes everything but the kitchen sink. <laughs> when we go to Subway, he gets almost every ingredient. Um, so there's quite a few ingredients here for his sandwich, but just use what you like. You do not have to use all of these by any means. When we have the breakfast sandwiches at Subway, we like getting it on their flatbread. I don't know what kind or brand they use, but the closest thing I could find to it were the Stonefire Artisan flatbreads, the rectangular shaped ones, and it was actually really close to what Subway uh, serves, we felt like. Next, you'll need some eggs. You just scramble up a few eggs. Um, Subway makes what they call, I think, omelets. So I just uh, whisked together a couple eggs and cooked it in a nonstick skillet. Um, I did feel like the eggs were a little on the thick side, though. So next time, I think I'll, I'll only um, use one egg to make it. And then for the toppings, I've got some ham, pre-cooked bacon, pepper jack cheese, some banana peppers, black olives, sliced bell pepper, cucumber, tomato, and then some baby arugula and spinach. And then of course we have the Southwest Chipotle sauce that we made earlier. So to start out, I took the flatbreads and I cut it in half. So I got two sandwiches out of one piece of bread. And then I laid down the egg omelet the meats and then the cheese and i'm going to place this into my oven now, i believe i had my oven set at 400 degrees and i cooked it for maybe about four or five minutes just until the bread started to get toasted and the cheese melted 
once it's there, you're going to remove it from the oven and then add your toppings. Now, like I said, for my husband, I pretty much added everything that I show you. I did add everything that I showed you rather for my husband's. For my sandwich, I like it much more simple. I just added some of the arugula and spinach, the sliced tomatoes, and then I'm going to add some of the Southwest Chipotle. And yes, we like quite a bit. So I was generous with that Southwest Chipotle. And then all I did was fold it over. And like I said, you can kind of see in the picture of our plates where the bread started to crack a little bit on me. And that was because my eggs were a little on the thick side. But I served this with just some orange smiles. And these sandwiches <laughs> were so good. Like I said, if you like Subway with breakfast sandwiches, I recommend you give this a try. And it's so much cheaper to make this at home rather than going to Subway. Like I said, out of this package of flatbread, I could get four breakfast sandwiches. And these are super, super hearty and filling. If you have one of these sandwiches, which is for breakfast, you probably won't feel like lunch. These are delicious. First up, I made strawberry cream cheese danishes. I've never made danishes like this before. This was my first time trying it and they were delicious. I'll include a link to the recipe that I used in the description box below. I did kind of change up the cream cheese mixture, which I'll explain that in just a little bit, but here are the ingredients that I used. You'll need some powdered sugar, brown sugar, crescent rolls, I've got some strawberry cream cheese, some strawberry jam. You can use strawberry jam, jelly preserves, whatever you've got or prefer. I'm using some homemade strawberry jam that my Aunt Kathy made. I've got some milk and butter. I've got my oven preheating to 350 degrees. I'm going to start out by making like the crescent roll heart shapes. So I'm taking some of the crescent rolls, as you can see, I've got two triangles here. I'm pinching that perforated edge together and then rolling it back up, but I'm going to leave out just a portion of the crescent roll dough that I don't roll up, if that makes sense. I'm going to do the exact same thing to two other rolls and then put the flat pieces together just like this. I know it's a little weird to explain, but as you can see here, you basically have a rolled end on each side and then kind of a flat side in the middle. And then using a serrated knife, I'm going to cut these into equal pieces. I'm going to place one of the little pieces onto a greased cookie sheet, lay the little crescent roll on there. And then for the little flat end, you just want to kind of pull that down to form uh, just basically a heart shape. So just kind of use your fingers, play around with it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you're just making a little heart shape. And once you've got the overall heart shape done, you wanna take your fingertips and kind of make a dent in the middle of the heart where you're going to put in your filling. In this bowl, I've got some melted butter. I'm going to add a little bit of brown sugar to that give it a stir and then you can brush it. I just spooned it, um, but you just wanna put it over the crescent roll dough. Now for the cream cheese portion, the recipe calls for you to combine powdered sugar, vanilla, softened cream cheese, and strawberry jam. You can totally do that, but I had a couple tablespoons left of this strawberry cream cheese on hand and I needed to use it up. My husband really loves to take Triscuits, just the plain Triscuits and dip it into uh, strawberry cream cheese as a snack. And so he had pretty much eaten this whole container, but like I said, we had a couple tablespoons left and I wanted to use it up. So that's what I'm going to use. I'm just going to add the cream cheese on there, spread it around, and then we're going to add the strawberry jam, spread that around. And then this is going to go into the preheated oven and you'll bake this for about 15 to 17 minutes until the crescent rolls are golden brown. Now you can serve these just like they are. I like to add a little bit of a drizzle and the recipe called for it. You just mix together some powdered sugar and milk, stir it until it's dissolved, and then just drizzle it over the danishes. Here they are finished. These were delicious. They were so, so good. And it really surprised me because I tried cream cheese danishes a long, long time ago, but they were just like the plain cream cheese danishes and I didn't care for it. So I really didn't think I would like these. And I was wrong. These are delicious. They were so, so yummy. So I really recommend that you all give these a try. They were easy to put together. They were delicious. And if you don't want to fool around with making, you know, the heart shapes, you could totally just skip over that and just press the crescent rolls down down, add your cream cheese, add your strawberry, and they'll still be cute and festive. And best of all, like I said, delicious. 
First up, I'm gonna share with you a chicken salad wrap. Now, about a month or so ago when we were traveling for business, we had a business meeting that they brought lunch in for us and they had these chicken salad wraps and they were delicious, so good. And I've tried my best to recreate them and I've had them several times since we've gotten back home. This is like one of my new favorites. And I especially love this because really you can make up the chicken salad and then just put the wraps together when you're ready to eat or you could pack the wrap and the chicken salad separately and take it you know, to work or school with you and then make your wrap at lunch. So here's what I'm gonna use. Feel free, of course, as always, make this your own. Use whatever ingredients you prefer or what you've got on hand. We of course need chicken for our chicken salad. Here I have a rotisserie chicken that I just shredded. You could also use leftover cooked chicken. You could boil up a chicken, bake it, cook it in the air fryer. This would be a great use for leftover chicken. You could also just use canned chicken. So I'm gonna use some mayonnaise, a little bit of Dijon mustard, some salt and pepper, some dry ranch dressing mix, and then I'm adding these cranberry and pecans. All right, so to put this together, this is so easy. I'm sure you all know how to make chicken salad. We're basically just gonna dump everything into the bowl and stir it until it's well combined. And like I mentioned earlier, use whatever you like. You can use Greek yogurt instead of mayonnaise if you prefer to make this a little lighter. You can add different fruits and vegetables, chopped apples, um, grapes, onions, celery. For those that like celery, I don't like it, so I'd skip it for myself, add it for my husband. <laughs> um, but again, just you know, add different nuts, just go wild, make it your own. I like to give this a taste and adjust the seasonings, and then you can eat this right away. It's best if you can put it in the refrigerator for just you know a little bit, 30 minutes or an hour. You can even make this overnight. All right, so here's what I'm gonna use to assemble the wrap. First, I'm using these flat out little wraps. If you don't care for these, I know some people don't like them, the husband for one doesn't care for them. You could use just regular tortillas or like the mission flavored wraps. Now I am kind of doing a copycat of that restaurant that we uh, ate at or that we had catered rather. And so they just laid down a bed of lettuce, added the chicken salad and then added sunflower seeds, which might sound odd, but they added a really yummy little crunch to the chicken salad. And then I have some of these uh, like harvest cheddar sun chips that I'm gonna eat. So like I said, to assemble the wrap, just lay down a bed of the lettuce, add your chicken salad, sprinkle on as much or as little of the sunflower seeds as you like, roll it up, and I'm going to cut it in half and eat that along with my chips. And that was my lunch this day. For dinner the next night, we tried a new recipe for honey lime chicken bowls. I saw this on Sammy's channel. It's Manage in the Maze. I'll have it linked down in the description box below. We loved this. It was so good, had such great flavor. And my husband actually asked us to add this to our like regular rotation of meals. So let me show you how to make these so yummy. Here are the ingredients we're going to use for the marinade for the chicken. We've got some garlic that we're going to mince, coriander, ground cumin, oil, brown sugar, honey, salt, fresh limes, and then cilantro. All right, so I've mentioned this before on my channel, but when I make marinades, I prefer to do it in a measuring cup, but you can do it in a bowl, that's totally fine. And I'm just going to add all of the ingredients. So we're gonna add the oil, the honey, the brown sugar, the juice of two of the limes. I'm gonna chop up that fresh cilantro, add that add the minced garlic cloves, the salt, cumin, and coriander, and I'm going to stir that until it's combined really well. Next, I'm going to add a couple chicken breasts to a Ziploc bag. Now you could use chicken thighs if you prefer to use dark meat. I'm sure that would be delicious. I'm going to add in the marinade and then give the marinade and chicken a little zhuzh, shake it in the Ziploc bag a little. And then I'm gonna place it into my refrigerator for maybe three to four hours to allow it to marinate. Here are the ingredients I'm going to use to make the sauce for the bowls. I've got some semi-homemade ranch dressing. This is just milk, mayonnaise, and some dry ranch dressing mix, fresh lime juice, cilantro, and salsa verde. And to make this, we're basically going to combine all the ingredients in a blender or food processor and whiz it up and that will be ready. So I'm adding in the ranch dressing, some of the salsa verde, 
the cilantro, and then the fresh lime juice. And I think I missed a couple of ingredients. I just forgot to set them out. Like I think Sammy used fresh garlic and maybe something else. But like I said, I'll have her video linked down in the description box below. Even without the ingredient or two that I missed, this was really good. So like I said, I'm just adding those ingredients. I'm going to um, whiz it or pulse it. It just doesn't take very long at all. Basically, you're just combining everything. And then I'm going to place this into the refrigerator until I'm ready for it for dinner. I'm also going to make some cilantro lime rice. Now you can use the rice in the packets. I like to use my rice cooker. I've mentioned my rice cooker before, many times before on my channel. I don't know if I've mentioned this though. Um, in high school, my best friend is, uh, she's Vietnamese, and my high school boyfriend is Laotian and his family owned like a Laotian Thai restaurant. And they and their families all use rice cookers. So I fell in love with rice cookers a long, long time ago. I swear by them. If you are intimidated by making rice, buy yourself a rice cooker. You don't need to spend a lot of money or get a big fancy one. This one I bought years and years ago at Walmart and it was like less than $20 and they're still about that same price range. So all I'm going to do is rinse my rice really well under some cold water, add it to the rice cooker, then you'll add your liquid. Um, in this case, I added some water and chicken bouillon powder. I'm going to add some of the cilantro that I've chopped up, some of the fresh lime juice, salt. I'm going to cover this with a lid and then just turn it to cook. And when it's done, it will flip from cook to warm. To cook your chicken, you could grill it, bake it, cook it in the air fryer. I'm just cooking it in a skillet. So I've got a little bit of oil and butter in this skillet. It's over about medium heat. Once it's hot, I'm going to add in my chicken. And I cooked this for about five minutes on each side. How long it takes to cook really ultimately depends on how big your pieces of chicken are. As you can tell in this picture, one of my pieces are a little bit bigger than the other. So that one took a couple extra minutes to cook. You just want to cook it until it's at least 165 degrees internal temperature. Here's the finished chicken. I did allow it to sit for about 10 minutes before I sliced into it. And I don't know if you can tell from this picture, but it looks like it's a little bit burnt. It's it's not really burnt. Remember in that marinade, we put honey and garlic, and so that's going to caramelize. But those little like really caramelized bits are some of my favorite. They're so delicious. All right, so here's everything that I'm going to use for the bowls. I've got a can of black beans that I rinsed and drained. I have some corn here. You could use fresh corn, canned corn. I have some of the Trader Joe's roasted corn. I thought that would be yummy, so I just allowed that to thaw. And then we've got some guacamole, pico de gallo. Of course, you could make your own homemade. For this night, though, I kept it easy. I just bought store-bought. We've got some of that cilantro lime rice, some extra cilantro, and then we have that homemade uh, ranch dressing that we made earlier. And last but not least, I have some shredded cheddar cheese. Now, I pretty much stuck to the same toppings or, uh, you know, add-ins, fix-ins, whatever you want to call it for our bowls as what Sammy used. But make this your own. Use whatever you and your family like. All right, here are the finished bowls. All I did was lay down the rice and then arrange the toppings on top and then put a little dish with the dressing so that we could use as much or as little as we wanted. And like I said, this was so incredibly delicious. We had tons of leftovers and I made uh, burritos the next day for lunch. They were super, super yummy. This was delicious. I really recommend you all give this a try. For dinner the next night, I tried a new recipe for herbed chicken sliders. This recipe came out of this Better Homes and Gardens magazine. This is the January, February um, 2022 edition. My dad gets lots of magazines, and after he reads through them, he'll bring them over to my husband and I, and always thumb through them. And this just looked so delicious and super easy, and it was. So let me show you how I made these. I will try to find this recipe um, if it's linked online and put it down in the description box below for you. I'm going to start by making the patty mixture. To this bowl, I'm adding some ground chicken. And then the recipe called for, I believe, fresh basil and fresh parsley, but I didn't want to buy fresh basil and fresh parsley just for this recipe. It wasn't enough to substantiate buying it for me, so I just used dry. It still turned out delicious. Next, I'm going to add some grated Parmesan cheese, then some salt and pepper. I'm going to add some minced fresh garlic. 
Next, I'm going to combine the mixture really well. Handling raw meat doesn't bother me. I just make sure to wash my hands really well. If it bothers you, you can use gloves or you could use a spoon or spatula. So once it's combined really well, I'm going to just eyeball the mixture into about as equal amounts as I can get it and then form my patties. Now, I did make these a little large because the ciabatta rolls were large. And a quick note, the recipe called for a pound and a half of ground chicken or you could also use turkey, but I just used a pound uh, just for my husband and I. Here are those ciabatta rolls. I got these at Walmart. I was going to butter these and toast them, but then I remembered that I had this Chef Chamois garlic butter on hand, so I decided to use that instead of regular butter. So I just melted some of that up, brushed it on the ciabatta rolls, and I'm going to toast these over about medium heat. Here are those toasted ciabatta rolls. That Chef Chamois butter on these were so, so good. All right, I'm going to cook up my chicken patties now. I've got my skillet over about medium heat. I'm going to add a little bit of oil and then add the chicken patties to my skillet. I cooked these for about five to six minutes per side. You just want to make sure you cook them until they're at least 165 degrees internal temperature. Once the chicken's done, we're going to add our sauce. The recipe calls for marinara sauce, but I had this jar of pizza sauce in my fridge that needed to be used up. So I added it to the small sauce pan and just warmed it up on about low heat while the chicken cooked. So I'm adding some of that sauce to the chicken patties. I'm going to add a sprinkle of Parmesan cheese, a couple slices of provolone cheese, and then I'm just going to allow this to cook for just about a minute or two until that cheese melts. Here's a picture of our plates. I added the chicken patties to our toasted buns, and then I made some quick side salads using things that I needed to use up. So we've got some spring mix, goat cheese crumbles, some dried cranberries, roasted pecans, and then some balsamic vinaigrette. This was delicious. It was so good. It was so fresh tasting, but those chicken patties and with the sauce, they had so much flavor. I'll definitely be making this again, and I recommend you all give this a try. For dinner the next night, I tried another new recipe for Korean beef bowls. This recipe was actually sent to me by one of you. Her name is Christy. And if you have any recipes that you would like for me to try and show on my channel, please email them to me. My email address is listed in the description box below. Christy, thank you so much for sending this to me. This was delicious. My husband especially, he kept raving about it. And it was so, so easy. And y'all, this dinner, it takes like 15 minutes to put together. No lie. So I will link the recipe that Chrissy sent me in the description box below. Definitely give this a try if you like Asian food. It was so good. So in this skillet, I'm going to add in the oil. I'm going to turn the skillet on about medium heat. Then I'm going to add in the garlic and stir it constantly and cook the garlic for about a minute until it becomes fragrant. And the recipe didn't say to do this, but I had a couple green onions that were looking a little sad and I wanted to use them up. So I just chopped them up and I'm going to add those to the skillet. Next, I'm adding in the ground beef. I'm going to take a spoon and break that up and then cook this until the beef is cooked all the way through and is nice and brown. And then you'll want to drain it if you need to. If you use a leaner ground beef, you probably won't have to drain it. But I'm just using the paper towel trick. I'm going to carefully um, kind of lean the skillet and using a paper towel soak up that fat and then I'll throw the paper towel away. Next, I'm going to add in the sauce. So in this measuring cup, I have brown sugar, soy sauce, sesame oil, red pepper flakes, and ground ginger. I'm going to whisk that until it's combined really well. Add it to my skillet, stir it, and then I'll simmer this for just a couple minutes, just two or three minutes, that's all it takes. Here is the finished ground beef mixture. And for the rice, before I started cooking the ground beef, I added some rice, water, and salt to my rice cooker and just cook that until it's done. You could also use frozen or microwavable rice for this. That would even make this a quicker dinner. Now, I thought that my husband would probably like kimchi to go along with this. And there is a gas station in our town that a Korean family owns. And they sell like not only burgers and hot dogs, your typical gas station fare, but the lady there, she also makes Korean food and she makes kimchi from scratch and my husband loves it. So I stopped by this day and picked up a little thing of kimchi for my husband. Here's a picture of our finished plates. We have some of the rice, the ground beef mixture, and then I garnished it with some chopped green onions and sesame seeds. And then my husband has the kimchi. And like I said, this was delicious. It was so, so good. I can't wait to make this again. 
For dinner this first night, I tried a new recipe for Pad CU, and I'll explain a little bit about the recipe in just a second, but I'm gonna get started on the spring rolls. So my husband loves Vietnamese style spring rolls, and a couple months or so ago, I found this spring roll kit at Walmart. It comes with the wrappers, the noodles, and a sauce. You can add whatever protein or vegetables you like. So today I'm using some cucumber, carrots, basil, and then some pre-cooked shrimp. And I just got this little shrimp cocktail because it was on sale and that was the cheapest cooked shrimp I could get my hands on. Um, you could of course use fresh mint, cilantro, different vegetables, proteins, whatever you like. And then all I'm gonna do is just follow these instructions on the back. Now, I also watched a couple videos on YouTube about rolling spring rolls, but I am by no means an expert at all. <laughs> this was my first time, and you'll see in the final picture, a couple were uh, not so well rolled, but hey, I did my best. So what I did is I just took some lukewarm water. I took one of the wrappers, dipped it in the water just for about 10 seconds or so, added just a tiny little bit of water to my cutting board, laid down that wrapper, and then I'm going to add my shrimp, the noodles, the vegetables and then roll it up just like a burrito um, now like i said it did take a little bit because although you roll it just like a burrito if you've ever made a burrito or wrap um, it was a different texture if that makes sense and i was having difficulty with the paper doing what i wanted it to do but it's all right it all came out in the end they don't have to be pretty just edible it was my first time so just practice makes perfect right so i'll keep practicing <laughs> once i've got it rolled up i am just going to set it to the side and keep rolling until i've used up all my wrappers and these are what they look like like i said those two on the, like the back right you can tell they were <laughs> kind of a hot mess but that's all right like I said they were still pretty tasty now for the pad cu the quick explanation um I have been trying to get better about cooking from different cuisines trying new things either that I've never made or never had one I just want to expand our horizons try new things also helps us get out of a rut right instead of just cooking the same things over and over and over again um, but another reason is a few months ago I'd asked if you all had any um, suggestions for videos and I had several people request me to make things that intimidate me or are a challenge to me and different world cuisines definitely fit that bill now my husband absolutely loves thai food i do as well and laotian food vietnamese food um but again we want to expand our horizons and still try new things so i saw this recipe for pad cu wanted to give it a try this was delicious my husband like absolutely raved about this now with like stir fries if you've ever made a stir fry or any kind of chinese dish there is a little bit of prep but once you get everything prepped this moves super super quickly it was really easy and delicious so let me show you how i put this together first up these are the ingredients for the sauce so i have some dark soy sauce now I couldn't find this in my grocery store near me. Um, you may be able to find it near you, especially if you live in a you know big city or a larger town. Um, you could also find it at like an Asian market. I just ordered mine from Amazon. It was only a couple bucks. You'll also need some oyster sauce, which you can find this just at your regular grocery store for the most part in their Asian aisle. Some regular soy sauce. I always use low sodium, just a personal preference. We need some vinegar sugar a little bit of water and then some of the recipes that i saw called for fish sauce this recipe in particular didn't um, but i'm going to go ahead and add a little bit anyway and the recipe of course will be linked down below now for the noodles uh kind of the same thing with some of the other ingredients you may be able to find this in the asian section of your grocery store depending on where you live i wasn't able to find it um, so i got this on amazon along with the dark soy sauce and a couple other things that that i was needing um but you know don't stress yourself out if you can't find these rice noodles use what you can find if all you can find or all you've got is fettuccine or spaghetti or linguine use it will it be authentic maybe not will it be delicious yes so don't stress yourself out just you know use what you can find but i'm going to cook those according to the package instructions and then we'll move forward with the dish now i don't have a wok no worries i just grabbed the largest skillet that i do have i've got it preheating with a little bit of oil over high heat once it was really nice and hot i added in some thinly sliced chicken breasts you could make this all vegetarian you could use whatever kind of protein you like now just like with a wok you want to kind of keep it moving uh, so i'm just going to stir it and then once the chicken is cooked almost completely 
I'm going to add in my broccolini. Now, traditionally, from what I read and the recipes that I saw, um, really this calls for a Chinese broccoli. I, I would horribly mispronounce the name if I tried. So the Chinese broccoli, but I could not find it near me. Um, so what I read is that a good substitute is broccolini and spinach, or you could just use broccoli. So if you can't find the broccolini, just use broccoli. You just want to cut it into pieces and add that. And like I said, because I'm using the broccolini, I'm going to add in a handful of spinach and then give that a stir and cook that until it wilts. And again, just takes a minute or two. Once it's pretty much wilted, I'm going to add in my minced garlic and again, give that a stir. I pushed that to the side and then to my empty section of the pan, I'm going to add in a little bit more oil and then a couple of eggs. You can skip the eggs if you'd like, but I love eggs and like my Pad CU and Latna and other Thai dishes. So I'm going to let the eggs scramble just a little bit. And once they're starting to cook, I'm going to stir them into the veggies and chicken and cook that for maybe, I don't know, 30 seconds or a minute. Then I'm going to add in my noodles and immediately add the sauce, stir that until it's combined really well. And then I'm going to let that cook for a couple minutes. Now, again, from what I read, not an expert, but from what I read on the recipes and from looking at videos online, really what makes Pad CU Pad CU is to caramelize the noodles. So when you add that sauce, because it's got the sugar and the oyster sauce, which has sugar in it, if you let that sit for just a minute or two, on the high heat, the noodles will kind of get brown and caramelized. And so once that happened, I gave them a stir and then let it sit on the other side for again, just a minute or two. And then finally, we are just going to add in uh, some of the shrimp. I had a few pieces of leftover shrimp from the spring rolls. I didn't want it to go to waste. So I just tossed it in at the last second because they were already cooked. So that was it. Super, super quick. Like I said, once you have everything prepped, you've got your veggies chopped and your sauce made and your noodles cooked, this went together in like no time at all. Here is the finished pad see you. And then here are the finished spring rolls. Now this uh, ramekin down on the bottom left, that's the hoisin sauce that came with the kit and it was good. I know though that my husband really likes a peanut sauce and I wasn't really sure if he'd like that hoisin sauce or not. So I just whipped together this peanut sauce really quickly. It was just a handful of ingredients. I had everything in my pantry. I'll put the recipe that I linked uh, or that I used rather. I'll link that down in the description box below. Here are the plates. This was so delicious. It was fun to try something new. And you know what? I was really intimidated. Um, Thai food for whatever reason intimidates me. I feel like I, I, maybe that's because I feel like there's always a lot of ingredients or steps or what, but this was actually really easy. Like I said, just chop the chicken and the veggies and cook the noodles and put this all together, but it just went together so quickly. So if you all like Thai food, or maybe if you've never had it, I really recommend you give this recipe a try. It was delicious. For dinner the next night, I tried a new recipe for slow cooker Korean beef tacos. We absolutely love these. Highly recommend. This recipe is from Six Sister Stuff. So here I've got a sirloin steak. I'm going to cut it into thin slices and toss it with some cornstarch. And then I'm going to place it into a crock pot liner that I sprayed with some cooking spray. Next, I chopped up some onions and sprinkled those over the beef. And then for the sauce for the beef, here's what we're going to use. We've got some sesame oil, rice vinegar, minced garlic, ground ginger, soy sauce, and brown sugar. So I'm going to combine all of the ingredients into a bowl. And then once it's combined really well, I'm going to pour it over the meat and onions and then give that a stir. Here's what it looks like at this point. I'm going to place my lid on it and you can cook this on low for six to eight hours or you can cook it on high. I did it on high for three to four hours, but I did go in about every hour or so and give it a stir. To go along with these, I decided to do some sweet potatoes. So in this bowl, I've got some sweet potatoes that I washed really well, peeled them and cut them into chunks. I'm going to add some brown sugar, salt and pepper, smoked paprika, garlic powder, cumin, and cayenne pepper. And I kind of loosely followed a recipe. I'll have it linked down in the description box below. 
I toss these sweet potatoes with a little bit of oil and all of those seasonings. I place them into the bottom of my air fryer basket and I cook these at 400 degrees for about 25 minutes or so. I shook them halfway through. How long it takes to cook them really just depends on how thick you cut your uh, sweet potatoes. Just cook them until they're tender. Now here's what they look like. They do look a little black, but that's just the brown sugar and sweet potato caramelizing. And those little blackened bits are so yummy. All right, here's the finished Korean beef. I'm gonna give it one final stir. And I don't know if you can tell, it's a little hard to see, but especially around the edges, it definitely sticks. That's why I highly recommend you go through and stir it, like I said, at least every hour. So to make the tacos, I'm gonna use some cilantro, some shredded cabbage. I just had this coleslaw mix on hand. And then I've got some shredded carrots. For the condiments, I'm gonna set these out and we can just use whatever we like. I've got some sriracha, sriracha mayonnaise. I have some of this kimchi mayonnaise. I found this, I think at Home Goods. And then I made some homemade yum yum sauce for dinner for another night. I just set that out. I'll have that recipe down below. It's so delicious. And then we've got some sesame seeds. All right, here's my plate. Gary ate dinner later. I took my tortilla shells and just warmed them up in a dry skillet on top of the stove and then added the Korean beef and some of the toppings. And these were delicious. We'll definitely make them again. So, so good. That is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope that you liked this video. If you did, hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And I hope you have a happy and safe new year.